Hey, it's me, Dio. Or I should stop making JoJo reference. Welcome to the second death lock of Project Reverie. In the last video, I promised you guys to show you the process of me making the bridge garden. So let's get straight into it. So according to the initial sketch I got from my friend, I was able to quickly get the moon ball around it. Then I spent around an hour making a base mesh in Credit Creator 3, which I can adjust every individual part of the base mesh until I'm fully satisfied. After that, I simply go Z the base mesh into ZBrush. And what am I doing right now is a technique called 3D Sketch I learned from Nico. Basically, I just duplicated my CC3 base mesh, inflated it inwards, and then started sculpting onto it. This way, I won't be able to destroy the perfect topology of my Credit Credit 3 base mesh. I was also able to quickly get a sculpt based on my main concept to make sure everything about the concept actually makes sense as well as getting an idea of how the concept actually looks in a 3D perspective instead of a 2D perspective on paper. Also, the 3D sketch sculpt will not be in the final product, so there's no need to worry about polycon and topology or that stuff. So I would recommend anyone to try sculpt a 3D sketch before actually getting into making all the real deals. I think it's a nice way to quickly iterate your designs and uh, possibly fix any errors within it. Alright, now I've got a good sense of what I'm looking for. I decided to start making the inner wares first, because I thought it probably would be too hard to make the inner wares when there are a bunch of armors blocking me though. So the basic workflow is I mask the shape of clothes on my base match first and then I extract it, delete everything except for the surface area. Then I need to mesh it until it reaches a manageable and decent topology. After that, I shape it better with the move brush, extract, uh, extrude it with the Z modeler brush, and then I use the dynamic subdivide. Also, add the sound crease to it. And the fun part came in after applying the dynamic subdivisions. I started sculpting the fabric details using the standard brush, like how I used to always do it. So after a while, I suddenly remembered the new clothes brush that came with ZBrush 2021. So of course I'm gonna play around with it. After some experiments, I found that using the clothes brush on a middle subdivision level with not too much polygons worked the best. After working some hours with them, I believe the best approach is to sculpt the basic fabric ways using a large size standard brush, then apply the micro defabric details with a new clothes brush. The clothes notch and the clothes move brush work the best for creating dense fabric waves, I think. And for the leather and iron details, I majorly rely on some default alphas. I found Alpha 6T to be very good at sculpting leather micro details uh, with settings of Z sub, color spread, and a lower intensity of around 7. Drawing it both vertically and horizontally onto the surface of my mesh creates some really nice, believable leather textures. The belts and the leg armors are basically using the same methods mentioned above and then the belly dragon head is a new addition to my concept so i spent around an hour each sculpting the whole thing then i duplicated it then you mesh it into a reasonable low poly and divide it then reproject all the details from my original sculpture back to the Z remeshed one. So now I have a mesh with the exact same details level, but a very clean topology as well. And then I created more armor pieces using the same methods.
Here I decided to make my ankle armor from scratch using the Z modeler brush and then sculpted iron details onto it later. As you can see, I marked the area first and extracted to make my armors. Here are some simple builds uh, brush I got from other stage marketplace. I would recommend you guys to check the art stage marketplace as well, since they are pretty cheap. I sculpted the leather surface details using the same methods. And doing the same thing again, masking, extracting, extrude, and adding details. But for the shoes, I didn't actually do that. I decided to, it's better to probably just sculpt the whole thing and then reproject it into a thinly meshed version of it. Like how I did with the dragon head. For the armor plates, I also started from scratch and then used the, uh, the gizmo deformers to bend it. Uh, especially the taper deformer as well as the band deformer. For the glove armors, I use nano mesh from the dynamic sub device section. This is a new feature of ZBrush 2021 as well. I was able to replace all the polygons of the gloves into a different shape. As you can see here, I was able to quickly add those details onto my gloves. And here, doing the same masking extracting to make the fingertips, the nails, and some accessories. Yeah, as you see, I also marks the shape onto the character's arm and then extract it so I can have a very good starting shape to work with. Then in order to draw the patterns into only the areas I want them to be, I simply mask the areas in worst mass so the pattern doesn't go all over the place. The making of the cape is very interesting because I got to use all of the clothes brush that came with the new ZBrush 2021 update and it was pretty fun. Experiment with the nano mesh as well but I didn't quite like it. If I wonder how I made those spikes, I used the snake hook brush. As I used the radial symmetry to uh, quickly draw the patterns onto whatever this is. I also used the snake hoop brush to sculpt the spikes of the dragon head as well. I used the same method to create the helmet and then I cut in half. So I duplicate the bottom half two times in order to make this whole piece. The rope is created by using a RMM curve brush. 
and the same IM curve brush is also used here to create the helmet hair strands. It's very simple to do. You just drag it out in ZBrush and then it is done. <laughs> here you see I masked the area of the helmet mask and then I used the Z modeler brush to cut the holes and then extrude, extrude it. So I can add further details onto it. Well, here I try to mask some areas of the cape so I can delete them in order to make it more ragged and brokenish. And here the entire crater is almost done. So far, the entire project has 103 million polygons. And last note, including weapon. As you see, the concept of the weapon is pretty abstract. But nothing is impossible to make in ZBrush. Uh, I use the same masking method to make those spiral shapes. Then after all, the basic weapon shape is done. I simply use the same 3D sketch method. Yeah, the same, same 3D sketch method. I duplicated the weapon, inflated inwards. And then I sculpted all those liquid branches, or whatever you call it. Yeah, finally, we have reached the end of the modeling part of Bridge Guardian. Check out all those dang sick micro details, man. Look at that fabric. Check out those patterns and the pores on his skin. Nice. The entire project now has 104 million polygons. This is probably the most detailed character models I have ever made. Check out these nice gloves and the flowers on the armor. Also, the scratches. Dang. I'm definitely satisfied with the end result. The only thing I hope I could improve is probably work a little bit faster. The entire Time lapse is actually 50 hours of working over the course of one and a half week, sped up 200 times. So yeah, that is a lot of hours. Check out this precious boy's weapon. Yes. So for the next devlog, I will cover from where we left off here to the very end where the character is fully animated. This includes map baking, UV unwraps, PBR texturing, and we'll also return to Crater Creator 3 for some more magic. Therefore, let's look forward to see you in the next one. But man, got that 50 hours. I only get to know this after combining all the recordings together, you know. Uh, I'm tired. Gotta hit the bed.